All right, we have a, a Stoop Story Special Edition today where we have one of the greatest minds inside of the Southwind organization. So I'm really excited for the listeners to get to hear from the perspective of Aaron Ferris, a franchise partner who's done a whole heck of a lot as it relates to building the foundation of what is called Southwind. And he's been referred to um, in many ways, has many names, but today he is Mr. Whatever It Takes as he's got a lot on his mind and some things that he's got to get off of his chest, uh, you know, and the podcast is a perfect platform to do that. So we got a lot of listeners across the brand and even outside of the brand that could benefit from the expertise and uh, of Aaron Ferris. So excited yeah, for having Yeah, him. I'll dial in here and it's not just a franchise partner. Uh, Aaron Ferris is a partner of several Southwind businesses. Uh, has been with us, an entrepreneur, started from the ground up, uh, definitely one of the hardest working, um, one, one of the type, the type of person that if there's an issue, he's going to find the solution to the problem. He's, a, he's the type of guy who is uh, never just going to accept things for what they are. He's going to change them because he knows that life is malleable and it, we make it whatever we want to make it. So I uh, love, excited and loving to have, love to have Aaron on today. And it's uh, going to be a really good opportunity for our listeners to hear from somebody who is, as we say, up to something. He's most definitely up to something. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. And, you know, I, I hear it all the time of, uh, I just want your position. I, I want to be where you're at. And people ask me all the time, like, you know, how did you get there? How, how did you get to the position you're in? How did you convince Josh and Tyler to, to get you up there? And, you know, the biggest thing is like, like truly being willing to do whatever it takes, right? Like there's, when I went to work for Southwind, there was a hundred guys that I was competing against. And there was guys that, you know, they were better managers than me. They were probably better influencers. But the thing is like, I was always willing to jump. Like I, I made sure that I was known one way or another. I made sure that once I found out that Aaron Hozak came in at six o'clock in the morning, I wanted him to see back then I had a, like, I think a 2008 Malibu or something like that, you know? And, and I made sure that he saw my shitty Malibu every time he came in in the morning, you know, like, I think sometimes he'd come in, he'd see the Malibu and just like kind of roll his eyes. Cause like, I didn't even really have a purpose in there. Like I'd go in, I'd sit in his office and just watch him. He's like, man, what, what, what you doing? <laughs> I was like, I just, I just want to see what you do. You know, I want to see what you do. Cause I want your fucking job. Like I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And, and uh, you know, Matt McKinney hit me up uh, about a month ago and he's like, bro, he's like, you, you hear episode five yet? And I'm like, no, not yet. He's like, bro, he's like, listen to it and call me, listen to it and call me. And some of the things that like really stuck out with me on that episode five was, you know, you guys had made a, a comment that you guys made a list of all the guys that were franchise partners, managers and stuff like that. And you said, uh, I want to see, you know, who's willing to do whatever it takes. Or I think, Back then, it, it was, it takes what it takes or something like that. And uh, you said, man, the list isn't as good as I want it to be. And I remember thinking right there is like, I knew my name was on that fucking list. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was no question in my mind that my name was on that list. And I think there's a lot of franchise partners that they, they I'm not even going to say franchise partners, just people in general that's listening, that they had have to question like, man, am I on that list? And if you you don't know hundred percent that you're on that list, like change what you're doing. But there's a lot of things that I'm doing that I knew I was on that list because like, I, I'm truly willing to, to do whatever it takes. Like I'm the first one in, I'm the last one to leave. Like, you know, I think another thing that you guys said in there, you know, be willing to not fit in. Right. So like if you jump in my truck and uh, I don't know if some people like jump on YouTube to, to look at your liked videos or something like that. If you look at my liked videos, it's all fucking like sales content or it's all, it's all something that's like educational, like something that's going to motivate me to get better. I don't have any videos. I'm not listening to music. Somebody came in my office the other day. It's like, Oh man, you see that episode of the, I don't even remember what he said. I'm like, nah, man, I mean, I ain't, I ain't watch TV. <laughs> like, like I don't have time to watch TV. I have a little four-year-old. I have a little one-year-old that like the, the TV is there. There's, you know, like my thing is if I'm going to watch something, it's going to be something that betters me to push me to the goal. And my goal is to win, right? Like we talk about Southwind being a hundred million dollar company. Like, no, fuck that. Like we're going to hit a $5 million company, you know? And, and once it's $5 million or $500 million, like we're going to be like, cool, how do we get to a billion? And there's certain people that are going to hold us back. And we have to sit there and say like, you know, if, if those people aren't pushing us to that goal, we, we just need to get rid of them. 
So I'm going to use my company as an example, right? So like when you guys said that you guys did a list, I do that every day. You know, on my whiteboard, there's a list of all my guys. And I sit there and say, what I do is I put bet on them, right? Because I want to know that I can bet my job. on. That's something that Lou Drew taught me. He's like, bro, can you, can you bet your job on this guy? And so me, I have 18 guys that work for me. And I need to know that I can bet on at least half of those guys. And the guys that I can't bet on, I don't fucking want them. And I let them know. You know, another thing that you guys said in episode five, we need more leaders that are courageous enough to sit there and tell guys that you're lying to yourself. So that's the cool thing about me is I'm willing to do that, right? I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win. So when I can bet my life or bet my job on 10 of my 18 guys, I have to be courageous enough to go to those other eight guys and say, hey, like you're lying to me. You're lying to yourself. You're not willing to do whatever it takes. And then show them how, right? Like I need to show them this is how to win. This is how to fucking show me that you really want to be here. And if they can't do that, then we have to replace them. We have to be courageous enough to get rid of those guys and find the right guys. And I, I think that's the biggest thing is we just have to ask ourselves, everybody that's listening to this, we have to ask ourselves, are we on that list that Josh and LeDrew made that they can sit there and say, this guy's going to do whatever it takes. And if you're not, you know, give us a call. Give one of us a call. Give me a call. You know, I know I'm on that fucking list. So give me a call and I will help you get on that list. I'll paint that picture for you. So that's what it's all about, man. Being able to paint that picture and being able to take those uh, those big jumps and be willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah, so, uh, so many uh, questions coming across my mind right now. But the first one is why? Why are you willing to do whatever it takes? Yeah, so I mean, I, I believe in the dream, right? Like, like that's, that's the biggest thing. When I got hired... You know, when I got hired, I, I had a good job and I, I took I took a good paying job to start for ten dollars an hour because the person that hired me, like and I don't know if you remember this, Josh, but Christian Christian was interviewing me and Josh took over the interview. Josh came in, he sat down, and he just started questioning me and stuff. And I'm like, who's this guy? <laughs> you know, but the thing is, is, is come find out he was the big dog, you know, he's the guy I wanted to impress anyway. But I went into that interview trying to prove myself, trying to prove that like I was willing to do this because uh, way back then, this is, you know, five years ago, I saw a Craigslist ad that had a picture of a junk truck and says, do you want to own your own business? And I was like, God, that's the dream. Like, that's the dream for me is I want to own my own business. And so when I went into the interview, I was trying to convince him that I was that guy. Like, you know, I want you to hire me super bad. And, and Christian was like, yeah, man. He's like, you know, you can make great money here, this and that, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm going to start you off 10 bucks an hour. But what it was is he, he had me believing that I could own my own business and that this was bigger than what I saw in front of me. And then Josh came in here and he just kind of put his stamp on it. Like, yeah, he's like, you know, I just bought two more businesses. He's like, I'm going to keep on buying. I just need leaders that want to step up and be willing to do whatever it takes to fucking run this shit. So my thing is I believed in the dream. I believed that I truly could go and run my own business. And then I made it happen, right? Like I personally, like I came in, I did everything I possibly could to show you guys I was willing to do whatever it takes. You guys gave me that business and said, hey, prove it to me. And I, I got pretty lucky, right? Got pretty fortunate, was able to push Reno from like 400,000 to 1.6, no big deal. Uh, but no, uh, the, the thing is, is like, I, that was a fucking grind, but I wasn't doing it because I was trying to make more money. Like I got paid $55,000 in Reno, you know, $55,000 year one. A lot of people are, oh, that's good money. Like the guys that are making $10 an hour are making good profit share. You guys are making more than 55000 I promise you. But the thing is, I believed in what we we're building. Reno was a stepping stone for, to, to $500 million. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? It's like, I believe that South One is, is the best company in the world. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes for that company. And, and I'm growing myself with Southwood. Let me start by saying, let me say this, you know, Aaron has a really unique story because he was only in the Kansas City organization, uh, the Southwood Kansas City organization for, gosh, four months, five months before we realized that this is the guy. This is the guy, you know, this is the guy, This right? guy right here? This is the one. And, okay. and he could yeah. go and, and, and not only... You know, start a business that he could run and mm -hmm. operate, but like build a company that uh, was going to operate at a high level for a long period of time. Uh, so he truly embodied everything it took, uh, or really embodied everything we look for when we're looking for a young entrepreneur. 
and uh, you know, and then from that point, he's he hasn't uh, you know he hasn't stopped. Now he owns uh, th- uh, three total companies uh, with us and is one of our most uh, dynamic leaders. Um, why don't let's ask Aaron some questions? Yeah, I, I have one for him. Um, you know, and everything that he said up until this point is so important. I love his confidence. Right? He says, "Man, look." When Matt called him, I already know I'm on the list. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm which at he's the right. top. Yeah, he's which right. he's right. I, you know, it's predictable. We talk about that all the time. It's predictable who's on the list. So truth be told, the people who are on the list, they know who they are. And the people who aren't, you know, they're the ones guessing, man, I wonder if I'm, you know, maybe texting somebody <laughs> else. You think I'm on the list? Like, no, that means you're not. Uh, you know, you can be honest with yourself, just like you, you know, put your staff through that that practice. So talking about whatever it takes, you know, I, I, I look at you right now and know, Today's supposed to be your day off. You know, you're in the office. You came to the office, you know, for this, uh, you know, this session on Stoop Stories. You know, I, I think about what it takes, and you've done a lot of what it takes. Is it ever really convenient? I mean, it's convenient to me just because it's my life. You know, I make it a lifestyle. Um, so I guess if you, it depends who you are, right? So like me, like this is my life. If one of my guys calls in, it's convenient for me to get up and tell my wife, Hey, unfortunately I'm not able to go to the zoo with you and the girls because I need to go into work. So I I make it convenient because it is my life. But uh, I guess that the answer that you're looking for is no, it's not convenient. Right. Like, I don't know how many times I've had to blow off my wife uh, and I've had to blow off other plans just for the fact that like, you know, the, the company needs me. But what I love about my wife is that, you know, it's a partnership. Like she has my back a hundred percent. Like when I, when I joined this company, I told her, I was like, look, this is going to be a grind, but, but I believe in this and, and I need you to have my back with it. And she said, okay. And she just jumped on board. So when I sit there and, you know, we have plans to, to maybe go to the, the, you know, maybe a play date or something like that. And I have to sit there and say, Hey, unfortunately you're going to have to go over there and, and do it yourself. Uh, she gets it, you know? So, um, you know, my thing is, is, if you make it a lifestyle, then it's never inconvenient when the, the company needs you, right? So my biggest thing is if you look at it like, like I think uh, I think it was episode five, to be honest with you, and you guys mentioned something about like, it's not for money. Like if, if it's for money, it's never going to be good enough for you, right? You could sit there and say, hey, like, cause I thought this, like when I first started, I was like, cool, I, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. But if you have that mindset, once you hit a hundred thousand dollars, you're like, fuck, I want 150 now. Once you make 150, you're like, okay, cool. How do I get to 200? You know, so it, it has to be bigger than that. And uh, you know, convenience. I mean, it's all about the lifestyle, right? Like we we have a fucking plan, our, our and our plan just keeps on fucking growing. Like we're gonna be the biggest, best company in the fucking world. So uh, as long as it's your lifestyle, it's never inconvenient. Yeah, he said, and it's not about the money; it's about purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is his purpose. Uh, you know, another another question I have for you, Aaron, is like, you know, are there days where you feel like you don't want to do it? And when that happens, what do you do? Yeah, so that's actually crazy. Uh, so before I jumped on this, I was, I was watching a, a video on my way. Well, I, okay, I wasn't watching. I was listening to a video <laughs> on the way here, driving. Uh, but it's Jordan Belfort. And uh, somebody asked him, they said, man, like, you know, you went to prison for 22 months. Like, how did you stay positive? And he said, you know, I I just have to know I have a purpose. Like he knew, like he had a purpose and his purpose was like, he was leaving his two little kids to go to prison for 22 months because he he fucked over, I think $111 million is what he stole from people. Um, And so, you know, he, he went to prison and he had a purpose and he knew that his purpose was his kids, right? So he knew that he wanted to prove his kids that he could make more money the right way and being a good dad then uh, he did the, the wrong way. Right. And so my thing is, is, you know, I have a purpose every day. Like my purpose is to grow as many companies as possible, the people that are under the Southwind uh, umbrella. And to me, it's not inconvenient, but uh, there are times that you wake up and you're like, fuck, like I might want to press snooze. You know, there's this is a story in Reno that, uh, you know, my daughter, we, we had to have surgery on my daughter. And uh, she got a lump in that in her chest. You remember that? Yeah. And uh, we were up like at the hospital till probably six o'clock in the morning. I remember telling my wife, like they finally released us. And it's crazy because I kept telling my wife, if they release us in time, I'm going to go to work. And I was like, if if not, 
I'm going to give Tim a call and just let him know that, that he's running it, you know, but I didn't want to wake him up early. And they re- released us at 6 a.m. in the morning. Been up all fucking night. And I just told my wife, I was like, look, I was like, you guys are good. You know, make sure that they're home, make sure they're there comfortable. And I fucking booked it into the office to be there before seven o'clock, which I was always in the office before seven o'clock. So I'm sure Tim like knew something was going on. And I'm sure I was tired, but it, it wasn't convenient. But the thing is, is I had a purpose. And my purpose was I wanted to fucking keep growing. And I wanted to push that franchise to the next level to, to prove to you guys that I had whatever it takes. And uh, so it's not about convenience. It's not about, uh, you know, whether something's comfortable or not. I, you know, that, that's where it fucking matters is when you're willing to get uncomfortable and it to be inconvenient and you still show up and uh, you're, you're there to battle through. Man, I can think of a thousand examples, um, none necessarily better than that one of Aaron being willing to do whatever it takes. And I think it's this aspect of who you are, Aaron, that makes him so good at executing because it's just who he is. This is a lifestyle. It's not turn it on, turn it off, you know, and maybe this is like maybe a whole nother episode because man, you talk about executing and what it takes to execute. Man, that's Aaron Ferris. And it's because he's willing to do what it takes. And sometimes the part of the uh, execution that's tough is being willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah, that's most of the time, right? Like the yeah, most of the time execution becomes challenging because it means you have to do specific things at at certain times that may be inconvenient yeah. or at times that you don't want to do them. And so people will choose not to do them and then fail to execute. Boom. And Aaron doesn't struggle with that because he's always willing you know, I remember uh, dropping you off at the hospital when Sailor was there, and we were had happened to be in town uh, in Reno at that point. And what he didn't tell you is we had just started that business, and so it was a new company, and he was damned if he was going to miss any time at all. Mm. Uh, I'm having to tell him like, man, are you sure? Like you should take some time off. He's like, hell no, we're good. I talked to the doctor. I feel good about wh- where we're at, and I'm going to be there, you know, to make sure we get kicked off and this thing goes well. Um, and he's had that relentless kind of effort the entire time of working with him. And really, that's kind of part of what it takes. And generally, when we have successful leaders in our organization, they all exhibit that. And they, they in, in, like embody that key component. It's like when the times get hard and things kind of become uncertain, they step up and they lead the way. They step up and they're willing to do what's necessary whenever it is to ensure that we are moving forward. And, uh, you know, so, so you know, lucky and, and proud to be part of your team, Aaron, and uh, we'll continue to watch you grow um, yeah. in this organization. So I, something I like to say is just like how many, like there's so many people in our organization with so many talents. Like, like it's just crazy. Like there's leaders that are, are just higher level leaders than me. There's people that can manage at a, just a different level of management than me. Like, yeah, I got certain people under me that like, they're just so much more organized. And if they just had that mindset of be willing to do whatever it takes, like they would just skyrocket up. So like the people that are listening, like that, that's my, that, I guess that's the whole goal is just to, to get you guys to understand, like, if you're willing to do whatever it takes, if you're willing to do that big jump, then I mean, God, the, the possibilities are, are truly endless. And if you don't know, now you know. I think I quote Biggie Smalls on that one. <laughs> that is it. That's all they need to know, Ferris. Adopt the mindset because hey, that's that's the guy that's willing that's to do whatever one. it takes. That's the that's guy, right the there. Guy that's right the there. Guy. That's him, right there. Yep, the top sure. of the list, right? So I, I've got to go and step my game up. Yep, get um, on up, and I'll, and I'll be calling you, Ferris, to get some pointers on. As what you I say, can do. pony up, Drew. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I'll be calling you here uh, right after this call, Ferris. <laughs> Figure out what else I can do, man. <laughs> Uh, phenomenal job super proud of you thank you for your time today and this is a gentleman that has been off the stoop for quite some time and we'll go ahead and say it get off the stoop thanks Ferris. appreciate you guys